Hello my lovelies and welcome to another video on my channel. Thank you very much for joining me today as always. This video is going to be about creating this mani. It's a bit of purple and pink holographic valentines -y goodness. Um, it's Valentine's Day coming up as you know and I wanted to do something with hearts and a little bit soppy I suppose for the want of a better word. Um, normally I would do uh, red for the hearts and things but my last mani was red and I had it on for about three weeks so I was a little bit over red on my nails and decided to go pinks and purples instead. So everything I used is here with the exception of my acetone, my acetone free nail polish remover and the stamping plates. So the stamping plates are very reflective on the video. I've never worked out how to get them to be not like that. So I will just put which stamping plates I use in the description box below but you'll see them as I go through the video as well. I do try and keep the glare out as much as possible so hopefully I was a little bit successful there. Everything else I used is here so I used a base coat, um, I used my top coat, obviously this isn't in order of using. <laughs> um, I used purple so what I like to do when I've got glitter is I like to use a corresponding colour underneath. So this one is a blue sky colour, it is 80551 and for the pinky uh, glitter I used this one which is a Madame Glam colour called Haunt Me. Now I have to say I didn't particularly like working with either of these gel polishes. I found them quite streaky. This purple in particular it's a really pretty pretty colour but it's very streaky when it goes on. It had had a good shake and all of those things and it doesn't look like it would be when you lift it out of the bottle but you'll see with the application that it is. It's not really an issue when you're putting glitter over the top. I just tried to float the colour as much as possible so that it was a bit less streaky. If you are going to use just this colour on its own I think you're going to end up using at least three coats to try and smooth out that streakiness. I used stamping polish so this is my Miss Cheering White. This is from NSI. Um, all the NSI products that I use, I've got a few of them in this collection. You can get 10% off using my code for your first order from NSI Australia. So I'll put that at the top of the screen. You will also need a stamper of some description. You will need a scraper. You will need spider gel. This is my NSI one. You will need some sort of dappen dish. Um, probably not essential, but handy when it comes to cleaning your stamping plates. In terms of the glitters I used, um, these are just generic glitters that I bought off eBay, my goodness, years ago. Um, this pink and this purple in here, as you can see, I bought a few at the same time. They're just lovely glitters, they're lovely holographic, um, and they burnish in really, really nicely because they're that ultra-fine glitter. Um, this again is optional, I just use this as my little claw to pick up. Um, bits of cotton wool or you know some sort of lint free preferably lint free not cotton wool to clean your stamping plate um, I also use this to scrape to scoop the glitter onto my nails you wouldn't need that if you just had like a little pot of glitter say something like this then you could literally just tip it over your nails but I thought I'd mention it because you'll see me use it I use a dotting tool to apply the spider gel um, I like to use, well I, today I wanted to use a fine point, so the thicker your dotting tool, the thicker the lines you're going to get with your spider gel. I didn't want particularly thick lines so I used literally the smallest end of my dotting tool as possible. If you don't have a dotting tool you could use a toothpick instead or anything that's got a point to it basically. You will need a brush to burnish in your glitter. I personally prefer quite a fluffy brush for that, but you can use uh, pretty much any brush. Um, and just with your application, you'll just want to sort of press it in and then burnish it. So um, this one's a very dense brush, but it is quite soft and fluffy. And I just use a uh, orange wood stick. Again, you could use a toothpick for this, so I just use this to remove, um, when you stamp up to the edge of your nail, you often get like strings of your stamping polish that hang over onto your sidewall, so I just use that to break that before I top coat. And then, yes, your stamping plates, as we mentioned before, and acetone and non-acetone remover, and I think that that's everything. If there's anything I missed, obviously you'll see it in the video. Oh yes, sorry, I did right here. Um, you will need a lint free or a lint roller or something sticky. You could use tape to clear off your stamper, um, you know, the dregs of your stamper once you've used it. 
and now I think that's everything. <laughs> Um, so I hope this finds you all well. Thank you very much for watching as always. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then I would love it if you would please do so. And let's get into it. So here I'm just going in with one coat of that Haunt Me color. This is a Madame Glam color. This actually came in one of my advent calendars, which is why it's a little mini one. I think it was it wasn't last year, I didn't get last year's, I think it was two, three years ago. Uh, what are we now? It was 2022 last year. So yes, I think it was 2020's advent calendar. This was in a mini, it was in box number 23. For those of you that have that advent calendar, this is where I got that colour from. It's actually a really pretty colour, It's I really do like it. It was just a little bit streaky to apply uh, compared to some of the other colours that I have in my Madame Glam collection. It wasn't the nicest to apply. But it wasn't the most difficult either so it was it was pretty good so i just go in with one coat of each of these colors this is just personal preference you don't actually need to do this step i just like when i use any loose glitter i always like to have a corresponding gel polish layer underneath i think it just gives your glitter just a little bit more depth it gives a little bit more boost in in terms of the color so I definitely it's always do it when I am doing nail sugar so when I'm doing raw glitter then I always do it because you will get a little bit of wear in your glitter over the two or three weeks that you have your mani so I always do a corresponding color underneath just when you do lose like a little bit of glitter here and there you really don't notice it because you've got the corresponding color underneath here I'm burnishing so it really is purely optional you don't need to be doing this step it's just personal preference so this is me <laughs> struggling with this Blue Sky 80551. It's actually a really pretty colour and it's got this beautiful sort of shimmer, sort of satin shimmer look to it, which is really lovely, but I think that's probably why it is quite tricky to apply. It's very patchy in its application. Um, I don't know why, whether it's, it is a very thin polish, maybe that's why, and maybe because it's not a particularly opaque colour, it does go on quite quite patchy I think I struggle a bit more with this middle finger than I did with the ring finger so what I basically do is I change my technique rather than apply gel polish the way I normally would I do use a more floating motion which basically means I get a little bit more product on my brush than I normally would and you have your brush more parallel to your nail than what you normally would so that's how I've sort of got away, got around that. I, it, it's not really essential because I'm putting loose glitter over the top, but I didn't want, I just wanted consistency in the look. So I needed to try and get rid of some of that patchiness. If you are going to use this as a standalone color, you would definitely find yourself doing multiple coats of this and probably just taking a fair bit of time like you can see me doing here getting a nice consistent look to it because it is a little bit of a tricky one not one I'd recommend for someone's first introduction to gel polish I think they should be a little bit harsh for that but it is a very pretty color and it's perfect for the glitter that I'm using so please don't anyone be offended by the way that I'm holding my fingers in this part of the video or any part of the video um, hopefully it's quite clear that I'm just trying to get my other nails out of the way because I don't want the purple glitter on all of my nails. So um, yeah, please yeah, please don't anyone be offended by that. It's just how I'm trying to, to get the nails out of the way. So here I'm just going in and I'm literally just scooping that glitter, that loose glitter onto the nail. Here I'm just cleaning off my scooper tool. If you don't have something like this, if you've only got like a little pot of glitter, I think I mentioned in the intro, then you can just tip it over. Make sure you've got a container to catch the excess underneath. You don't want to be wasting all of that glitter. So make sure you capture it in like a little, you know, little dish or something like that. But literally all I'm doing at this point is just scooping it on and getting full coverage all over that gel polish. So this is onto the tacky layer of that gel polish color. So if you're not going to use a color, then you would need to have applied a base coat where I did my color. Or if the system that you use, if your colors don't cure with a tacky layer, then you will need to put a layer of base coat or something that does have a tacky layer over the top so that you can do this burnishing technique. So now I'm just pressing that glitter in and once I'm, I'm happy with the way it's all pressed in, 
then I do the burnishing, which is this movement, which is basically scrubbing your brush up and down the nail and making sure that all of those glitters are laying perfectly flat making sure that you've got every last bit of your nail covered. So you can be reasonably rough with this as long as you have pressed that glitter in really well. You really, I see a lot of people do the burnishing and pressing at the same time. I don't like to do that because I think that's when you're more likely to end up with bald patches in your glitter. I think it's really, for me, I find it really valuable to do that three steps. So pour the glitter on, press it in, and then do the burnishing. And since I've been doing it that way, touch wood, um, I haven't had any bald patches. I haven't had any of the glitter coming off when I'm burnishing. It's just all been, it's just all worked. So yes, it does probably take you a few seconds longer. And yes, it is quite marked that there's three steps, but I just find it to be foolproof, basically. Um, it just works for me every time, which is what I like. I would rather spend a few extra seconds here and there and just know that it's going to work rather than have to fiddle and try and try and fix it up so so you can see here I'm really sort of going to town a bit on that and you can because it has been pressed into that tacky layer but that tacky layer is really really important uh, if you don't have a tacky layer then it's just not going to work so just make sure you put a layer of base coat down and now I'm just coming in with a layer of base coat over the top. So this is a base coat that I use purely for this purpose, which is just having a layer of clear over glitter. Loose glitter is very good at getting into your nail pol into your gel polish brush. It's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to get out once that's happened. So if you can have a standalone a bottle of you know base coat or, or top coat something like that that you can use just for glitter then that's great if you don't the other option you can use is to decant some of that polish onto a palette and use a standalone brush that's your other option and then you're not going to get any into your your base gel brush either so either option will work I'm just flash curing that because I'm actually going in with quite a big dollop of base gel here because I don't want my base gel to dislodge any of my glitter. I just want to have a nice, smooth, consistent coating. So I am going in with a reasonable dollop of base gel. And this particular base gel is very runny. I have to say it's not my favorite to use because of that, uh, but it does do this job very well. So I do flash cure between each nail. As you saw there, it's literally just for a few seconds, but it's just to keep that base gel from running because I do have a bit of a a bit of a good layer on there and then I'm just making sure that I haven't got any in my cuticle area or side walls and I do that for all four of those nails so the reason I'm doing this this is going to give me a protective layer before I apply my spider gel and my stamping so for those of you that have ever done stamping in your life you know exactly what I mean when I say it can be a bit fickle Sometimes you can put an image down and it just does not look right and you have to remove it and redo it. So if I didn't have a protective layer on top of my glitter, I would be removing my loose glitter layer along with my stamping or my spider gel, whatever it was that I'm not happy with what I do next. So I just choose to put down a layer of base gel. Because it's a base gel, it's going to leave me with a tacky layer, which is fine for anything I am going to do as a next step. So, and it does mean that if I'm not happy with what I do as a next step, I can just remove it and everything's absolutely fine. I don't need to worry about damaging my glitter. Because loose glitter is, you know, it's a bit of a, um, it's a bit tricky and it can be easy to dislodge it. You know, if you make a mistake or if you, you know, stab it accidentally with an orange wood stick or something, you know, you can gouge a chunk out of your, out of your glitter and obviously you don't want to be doing that. So. Putting a layer of base gel just takes that issue away. So we're just going in, I'm doing that on all four of those nails, and then that's going to go in the lamp. This is a 30 second cure for um, the base gel. And now I'm going in with the very thin tip of my, my thinnest dotting tool, and I'm just going in with the spider gel. I love spider gel. It's just, it's such funky stuff. For those of you that haven't used it, it's really, it, it's really cool. It's good fun to use. You can do all sorts of different things. I'm just doing something very, very simple here. I'm just putting a few little swirls across the base of my nail. 
Every now and again, this, this spider gel is particularly sticky compared to some of the other brands that I've used, which, so I'm just going in and just clearing off my brush, uh, my brush is it, my dotting tool every now and again. And I didn't want too many lines, I just wanted a few sort of crisscrossing, just to give me a little bit of a, a base on my ring finger. I'd done the same thing on my thumb. I just did that off camera because once you've seen it sort of once, um, yeah, it's exactly the same thing. So I just put that over the top. And then that goes and cures in the lamp. I'm trying to think if that's 30 or 60 second. I think that's a 60 second cure, that spider gel. I think that's 60. Now I'm just coming in with some cleanser and removing the tacky layer from that base gel. So you don't necessarily have to do that. If you wanted to, you could stamp uh, your stamper onto your stamper head and then let that sit and dry and you can do that if you want to stamp onto the tacky layer. But I choose to remove the tacky layer because I just, yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and do my stamping and not worry about having to wait for it to dry. So this stamping plate is a Bunder Monster one. It is BM-H18. I have had this one for years. Honestly, couldn't tell you if it is still around. Bunder Monster is now Maniology. So even if the plate is still available, I would imagine it's probably been rebadged by now. But it's a pretty little plate. It's perfect for Valentine's Day. It's basically a collection of heart designs. Um, and it's just really quite cute. So yes, that is what we are doing on my little finger. We're not worrying about the excess stamping polish that gets onto my skin. I'm not too worried about that. If you are, you can always put some of that tape down first, if you would like to do that. Um, I personally choose not to use it, but that is always an option if you would rather do that. Uh, I just basically wait until I've finished with my mani and then I go around with some acetone free nail polish remover and remove it that way. So I'm trying to make sure I get in shot there. It's a bit tricky when you're doing stamping so hopefully you can see clearly enough what, what I was doing there. I'm just coming in with my third image. So I was using all three of those larger images on this particular plate. That's just my lint roller. That's the best way I find to remove sort of the leftover bits of your stamping image. If you haven't got one of those lint rollers, you could always use some tape or something like that. But I recommend that you don't use acetone or any solvents because you can damage your stamper head. Mm. So that image I stamped, wasn't happy with it. I thought it looked a bit blurry. It just wasn't, it wasn't clear enough for me. So I do remove it. Oh, maybe not at this point, maybe I'll do it a little bit later. Yeah, no, nah, here we go. So I'm just grabbing some uh, acetone-free nail polish remover. You could use acetone, I choose not to because basically acetone is the solvent that you use when you want to break down your gel polish surface. So I would like to use acetone-free to remove any stamping polish from my nails or my skin. But if all you've got is acetone, then, then you can use that. So I'm just going to go in, just wanted to make sure that acetone was fully dried. And I'm going in with attempt number two. So as you'll see from the intro, you saw a different stamper. At some point during this mani, I changed the stamper that I was using. I just found my other stamper was giving me slightly crisper images. These images are probably okay. You know me, I'm just super fussy and I just wanted them to be super, super crisp. So at some point, and I'm not sure where it is, I do swap out my stamper. So this plate is a very, very old one. So this goes back to the Salon Express stamper. For those of you that saw my video a few weeks back on the history of stamping, this is like one of the first stamping plates I ever had and it is plate SE21 from Salon Express. But this heart image is really cute and again I thought it was just perfect for you know Valentine's Day coming up so um, it's just yeah it's just a nice a nice little image. Oh and my scraper is from Born Pretty it's the scraper you'll have seen in all of my videos it is my favorite scraper it just it just works, it just does its thing. 
um, and just works really well. So here we are going in with that image, it's just towards the bottom of the plate there. It's just a collection of multiple hearts. Ooh, a little blurry there, sorry about that. Um, and again, I wasn't happy with that image. It just wasn't as crisp and clean as I wanted it to be. And this might be where I swap my, yeah, there we go. This is where I changed to my other stamper which is my second preference, or my second preferred stamper. My blue one is my preferred because it's a clear one. I can see through the base and it is just so big. It's a great size. This one is nice and clear, but it's just not as big, which is why it's my second choice. But it does tend to be a bit more consistent in the way that it stamps over the blue one. So it is, um, yeah, it is a very, very good stamper, this one and that is a born pretty one so it's yeah it's a it's a great stamper and that first one that first image i picked up with this one was my fault i the um, acetone hadn't finished drying on my stamping plate so it didn't pick the image up properly so that was entirely my fault <laughs> user error um and then you can see i go in and i redo that one because i wasn't quite 100 percent happy with it and i was like right i've got my other stamper out now so we were off and we went ahead with the other stamper um, yeah so it is yeah it is often a case of trial and error with stamping plates I knew I wanted to use the white stamping polish I knew the images I wanted to use being Valentine's Day so the only thing I could change out was the stamper and it did make a difference as it almost always does so always worth a try if you've got more than one stamper in your collection then have a go and see but this one is a bit harder to capture on camera so my apologies for that <laughs> there you go i gave a thumbs up Woo! third time lucky um and now i'm just going around with the pointy end of an orange wood stick or cuticle stick whatever you want to call them and i'm just breaking that link so where you've got a bit of polish uh, stamping polish that has gone across over to the skin all you're doing is breaking that link with something pointy if you don't have an orange wood stick a toothpick will do the job just fine or a pointy dotting tool and here i am going in with my gel top coat now you want to make sure that you give your stamping polish time to dry so that can be depending on the type of polish you're using and the thickness of the amount of polish on the image it can be anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes so just make sure it is fully dry Otherwise, your top coat will not adhere properly and you might find that you get a breakdown of your manly before your two or three weeks or however often you change out your nails. Make sure you cap the free edge really well, especially when you've got an image that takes up the full nail or goes to that free edge. You need to make sure that you cap that really, really well. Um, and again, don't be stingy with your layer of top coat here, but like with your base coat that we put over the glitter, make sure you have a good dollop of top coat here because you want that image to be protected really, really well. If you have a really thin consistency top coat that you think, oh, I'm not sure about this, then just do a double double layer. Do, yeah, or you can put a layer of base coat down over the top of your image and then a layer of top coat over that. That might be easier, especially if you've got a no wipe top coat because you don't want to have to buff it. So. Uh, if that's the case, put a layer of base gel down and then put a layer of top coat over that. I wasn't worried about doing that because this top coat is quite thick. I love this top coat. It has become my favourite. It is one that I picked up um, a few weeks back and I just I haven't picked up a top coat since uh, other than this one. So my last Manny that I did for, for those of you that saw it, the, the red and silver ombre, um, that one I had on my nails for between three and four weeks and the day that I removed it which was yesterday it looked just as good as it did the day that I did it so the, the top coat is very very good and it's a nice thickish one as well so it protects anything any nail art or glitter or stamping or anything you've got underneath that and yes so I'm just going to do that on all of my nails and then this cures for 60 seconds this top coat it is a no wipe top coat so you don't need to worry about removing any tacky layers or anything like that once it is fully cured
and I did just do a little bit of a flash cure again because I did do a, a reasonably um, hefty layer of top coat same as I did with my base coat it's always a good idea when you're trying to protect any kind of nail art don't be um, don't be tempted to put minimal amounts of uh, protective layers over the top so it's yeah it might make your nails a little bit thicker but not really I'm just looking at my nails they're not really thick so um, yeah it's just it's just handy you give your nails a bit of extra protection and then your mani should last you you know two to four weeks depending on you know what you're doing and and that kind of thing and how often you generally need to do your nails oh got a little bit of dog fur in there always the way so I just remove that and as a result I just smoothed over that again just to make sure that that covered up really well um, so yes don't mind the mess on my skin we are going to clear that up very soon right about now so I did my right hand off camera so normally I do I complete my right hand and then I do my left on the video but because I was doing glitter and stamping and all things messy um, I tend to do that all at once so um, yeah so it was a little bit patchy but I did do my right hand off camera because you'd seen me do everything anyway and now I'm just coming in with my acetone free polish remover and getting rid of all of that stamping polish that is on my skin and around the place where I don't want it to be so make sure before you come in with your non acetone or whatever you're using to remove your stamping polish make sure that your nails are completely cooled from the lamp so don't just take your nails out of the lamp and immediately launch in with your solvent, whichever one you're going to use, because you risk dulling the top coat that you have so carefully applied and has given you that beautiful shine. And especially if you're using glitters and things like that, you really want that ultimate shine from your top coat. So just make sure that your nails have completely cooled. And that's the same for everything, by the way, not just acetone or non-acetone remover. That's the same goes for applying cuticle oil or a hand cream or anything that you're you know you want to rehydrate your nails with um, just leave it a good you know 30 seconds or so make sure that your top coat has completely cooled before you go in with anything like that so yeah and then that's that will maintain the shine on your top coat so it's a bit of a shame holographic glitter doesn't show up in all that well on camera. I might actually have to go and take a shot out in the sun because it's just, yeah, the, the camera just can't catch it, unfortunately. It is truly beautiful. Holographic glitter is my favourite, um, as I'm sure you probably know. I just love it. It's so pretty. Anyway, I hope this finds you all well. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.